is already known. Instead of calculating two points, you only have to calculate one more point, which is alpha b. That is the idea. Okay? So, let me erase thing here so that the picture look a little bit clearer. Okay? So let me erase. It is almost done for for this uh, part of the theory of the golden section. So, right now we already proved to you that alpha A is already known based on step number four. So, the next thing I want to show you is this. So you calculate alpha. Uh, you calculate uh, alpha a. Uh, alpha a is already known. So you only have to do. You have to calculate the new point alpha b right here. You have to calculate that new point alpha b only. You don't have to calculate alpha a. And now you summarize it by looking at the picture on the right, like this. Here is your alpha lower bound the function value. Here is a function value at upper bound. Here is the function value at alpha A. Here is the function value at alpha B. All you have to do is to compare either function value at alpha A is that bigger or smaller when you compare with the function value at alpha b? Obviously, in this case, the function at point A, which is alpha A, is bigger than the function at alpha b, which is point B. So let's see the pattern. From the lower bound to point A, the function value go down. From point A to point B, the function go down. From point B to the upper bound, it go up. That means the pattern change. When the pattern is changed, that means you say, this guy right there should be the new upper bound, and two point before that, point A should be the lower bound. Okay? On the other hand, there is another possibility. There's another possibility. Suppose, for some reason, the function at alpha a is this point, and the function at alpha b is this point. In that case, then, obviously, the function at a at alpha a is less than the function at alpha b. So let's see what happened to the parent in this case. Okay? You start with function at lower bound. You go to this interior point, alpha a, the function value go down. And then from alpha a, interior point, you go to the next interior point, alpha b, the function go up. Instead of down, down, go up, the, the pattern change. That telling me that in this situation, this should be the new upper bound, and two point before that, this guy should be the lower bound. So depending on how f at alpha a compared to f at alpha b, the new interval will be different. Okay? Now let's go back to the next slide. So that's why, based on my previous discussion, I say if the function at alpha a is bigger than the function at alpha b, then what you have is the new lower bound equal to alpha a. And the new upper bound is the same thing as the old upper bound in the previous iteration. If this story is reversed, that means g alpha a is less than g alpha b, then the story will reverse. What does that mean? In that case, that means 
the new lower bound will be the same as the old lower bound but the new upper bound <coughs> will be equal to alpha b so depending on g at alpha a greater than or less than g at alpha b either you will update the new lower bound or you have to update the new upper bound there's a third possibility g alpha a is not less than not greater than in that case then it must be equal to g alpha b that's a third possibility if that is the case then both the new lower bound and the new upper bound have to be updated to be equal to alpha a and alpha b respectively so i will say that 99 percent of the time you have to update either the new lower bound or the new upper bound and then once a while you may have the situation we have to update both lower bound and upper bound okay let me go to the next point to explain let me go to the next point to up explain uh, suppose we want to calculate Suppose we want to calculate the new upper bound subtract the new lower bound. Okay, let's see what happened. According to our assumption in this situation, the new upper bound is the same thing as the old upper bound. That's why new upper bound here I replace by the same the old upper bound. However, the new lower bound, which is the green color, should be equal to the new value, which is alpha A. However, in the previous slide, we already calculated alpha A. In fact, if you want to remember alpha A in the previous slide, as you can see, we already calculated alpha A is here, which is the same thing alpha A is given right there. So this is alpha A. We already calculated. So whatever the alpha A formula that we just calculated in here, the four step, we just substitute it into the next slide. Okay? So here it is. The alpha A that we just calculated from the previous step. Alpha L, the new lower bound, which is the same thing is alpha a and the alpha a that we calculated from the previous step we substitute into here and also don't forget we already know the original upper bound remember on the previous slide we have something alpha upper bound go to something like summation on the index way go from 0 to j of delta time 1.618 raised to the power v so, you just substitute alpha upper bar by that formula, alpha A by another formula, then you will get the difference of new upper bar, subtract new lower bar, it just equal to delta times 1.618J. Okay, we're almost done with the derivation to see. more about the golden section how does it behave so we already I already explained to you how to get alpha new upper bound subtract alpha new lower bound the next thing I want to calculate is this I want to see what is alpha B which is the new inserted point subtract alpha lower bound new okay alpha b that is here the new lower bound that is the same thing as alpha a but according to my calculus on the previous slide you can see 
alpha b subtract alpha a alpha b subtract alpha a okay remember alpha b subtract alpha a what does that mean here it is alpha b is this coordinate right there if you subtract with alpha a you subtract this distance when you subtract the two what you get will be this distance from here to there but that distance is exactly the so-called the middle distance but that middle distance should be equal to this total distance from there to there which by the way that distance is alpha upper bound minus alpha lower bound you take the very big distance alpha upper bound minus this distance you subtract this distance and you subtract another distance like this then you will get the middle distance okay so to summarize it if you take alpha b subtract alpha a you will get the middle distance and that middle distance is given on the next slide so let me show you what is alpha b subtracts alpha a so on the next slide on the next slide you will see yep alpha b subtract alpha a that will give you this formula based on the previous uh, uh, picture the previous slides uh, now the last thing you will do you will subtract the formula for alpha u I hope you remember the formula right summation v go from 0 to j of delta time 1.618 raised to the power v subtract that uh, replace that formula for alpha, alpha u and then for alpha l you use the formula we developed earlier summation of the same thing delta time 1.618 raised to the power v v go from 0 to j minus 2 you subtract those two formula to there and there then you will get right away this term the one I show you uh, in the, uh, the purple color by the way you can see very obvious right the summation here go up to J this guy go up to J minus 2 that means when you subtract it things cancel out and all you have just a two extra term which is here and there okay so it's very very clear okay so I already explained to you how do you get I already explained to you how do you get this equation so let me erase my board a little bit so that it will be clearer we almost done I hope